Oh, well. There we go. Hey, what's going on, world? It's me again, Ethan Smith, a.k.a. Big Sarge, in charge of my motherfucking self and nobody else. Because don't nobody else listen to me like I listen to me. You know what it is. It's Sunday, free day, grunt speak day. Free By grunts. Day. For grunts. Everybody welcome, but everybody cannot and will not be a member. I ain't going to give you no long introduction. You know what it is. If you don't hold that identifier, don't be mad. Just be part of the community, but you're not in the platoon. Don't be mad. Just maybe kind of um, re-enlist or some shit. <laughs> Retention into your talk yeah. to Whiskey Charlie. And then <laughs> go back to some real trying. Yeah. So let me hit y'all with this quick, uh, what we call Papa Sierra Alpha. Public service announcement. Mm. Not for kids, but kids will be blessed. Not for kids, but kids will be blessed. Listen to the message and don't just judge the messengers. This is by grunts, for grunts, and the people that support grunts to help your grunts get through to be a better version of you and them. Yeah. But with that being said, to my front, to my right, your left, I got my man Shooter, Whiskey Charlie Shooter. What's up, man? What's been going on with you? Man, see, getting ready, man, sipping on these Hennessy shots. Getting ready? What you getting ready uh, for? The show or the get, move? Man, I'm getting ready. I've been ready for the show. I'm always ready for the show, but I'm getting ready for this move, man. <laughs> getting ready for this move, being that motherfucker. You all true bouncing all the way to that motherfucker, man. Hey, nah. Atlanta, we, we coming, baby. Atlanta, ATL, Killer Wolf coming to a town near you, baby. They ain't ready for the wolf, dude. I don't think they ready for it. They man. Falcons over there. What the wolves going to do? They flying. What the wolves going to do over man, there? Man, look here. I don't know. Look here. <laughs> <laughs> we we come through that motherfucker like a tsunami, baby. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, How was your pack. Thanksgiving? Oh, it was good, man. My girl cooked that homemade mac and cheese. Um, did what you call that? The cornbread dressing. Mm -hmm. Um, turkey wings in the crock pot. All Ooh, that good shit. Like, we, then went to mud laws, ate two plates. Oh, so you put then that went to the ain't and got something. Then came back and ate again. Ooh but you know what? It's, it's good. It's been good, man. You know, so, eat, staying safe. You know, staying away from the corona haters. You know, keeping my face clean. Nah. That's about it. All right. So where am I? Where are we? But anyhow, okay, Whiskey Charlie. We already know he. he what was? What was? Your, what's your week been like? He, How was your Thanksgiving? How's the family? Talk to me. He woke up butt naked with a turkey on his ass. So, <laughs> hey, 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 hey! Don't be telling wait, my wait, secret. Wait. That's he, after said, our bro, he said, no, nah, he said butt naked with a turkey on his ass. A turkey on his ass. <laughs> hey, boy, that, that Don't put my secrets out there. That's how I based it. I know how he rolled. No, nah, he said butt naked with a turkey. <laughs> I'm double. I'm yeah, double. Yeah, you do, you do. What, how, how was your Thanksgiving, bro? Uh, you know, my, thank, my Thanksgiving was pretty good, man. Uh, I actually, uh, let's see here, the, actually the day prior, which uh, Anybody on uh, part of Wednesday, we, uh, my home, uh, my store, Home Depot, actually yeah. had some yeah. to the yeah. store. Follow me. They come yeah. up. You getting to share, bro? <laughs> to... Say that again. I'm sorry, Whiskey Charlie. I was explaining old shooter here how I go out and I put a grunt speak on everybody group page that I'm a part of, whether they're grunt or not. If I'm in your group, you in my group now. You're gonna get grunt speak. So your yeah. Thanksgiving, I seen. I was looking on YouTube oh, I earlier. It. I got it. Yeah. So share to whoever you in. I seen on YouTube earlier you was doing a party for um, Nova Lee and not Siley, but Nova Lee and Siley, yeah, that's right. Oh, not, yeah, yeah, I just shared it late. I just I shared it late. <laughs> I seen you early, late, but can you tell that me that was earlier this uh, that was earlier this month? But uh, nah, I mean uh, on the uh, Wednesday, Wednesday uh, Home Depot uh, actually uh, bought all the associates in the store some food. And uh, we had some leftovers in a day, and me and one of my uh, fellow associates actually took the leftovers out to some of the uh, homeless out in the local community. So mm -hmm. uh, that made me feel good. And then after that, uh, of course, woke up, drove to Houston, did a little Thanksgiving uh, deal with some family and fr uh, friends. So it was all good there. But uh, now I got a, a bigger project on my hands. I got to actually one of the councilmen of uh, Beaumont actually reached out to me, and uh, we've got a project coming up here uh, soon. Home Depot does partnering with the uh the city and uh gonna re re uh furbish some uh refurbish some uh, old uh uh what is that uh salvation army buildings and they're gonna turn into uh, homeless vet houses and uh, also another one and turn it into 
uh, a homeless uh, house for females and kids. That's so uh, Home Depot is going to do- donate some material and stuff like that to help uh, help some people get off the street and uh, start start fresh. So, you know, good stuff. Yeah, that's real good stuff, man. You always putting Home Depot on deck about how they taking care of the community. Home Depot CEO, I know you hear me, man. They need to pay get him. Justin. Need to pay him, man. I ain't talking about Whiskey Charlie now. Nah. I'm talking about Justin. Now, I ain't gonna give his last name because you know who he is. Give Justin that job and then some that he interviewed for because you know he more than capable. Mm. He putting you out there. You ain't putting Grunt Speak out there. We need a Grunt Speak logo on a Home Depot shirt. You ain't never. Mind. <laughs> you keep speaking about Home Depot that and how they blessing the community and how you helping others. That'd be Think about this. Absolutely. That could be a good sponsorship for us because they help vets in so many ways. You a vet. And as long as we go ahead and take this thing and turn it to that nonprofit and truly help vets the way we plan to do, then Home Depot might start to talk about you too. But uh, yeah. I'm through. Yeah. So we gonna let you do what you do and introduce the show and what we talking about too, and then we gonna kind of flow through Whiskey Charlie and we gonna let him run the show today. Well, you gonna let Whiskey? Well, we gonna let Whiskey Charlie start the show. We gonna go for hey, it. Okay, let's go. Like y'all flow. Shoot, I don't know if you know this or not because you probably don't go back and watch the videos that nah, much. No, I don't watch none. Of them. Yeah, but if you go back and watch the video, you should see that you take over a lot of the talk, G. <laughs> you just gotta go back. And- Hey, I, 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 I like it. Hey, I like I like chiming in in between and then throwing some things out there. But uh, hey, I love listening. Hey, you know, some good, good uh, helpful advice out there. Hey, you, you know, you never agree upon everything everybody says, but uh, hey, I definitely love a uh, I love listening just as much as I love talking. But uh, hey, today's uh you know little little uh, session is uh what I like to say is uh one of the things is what did you get out of being infantry? Uh, whether it was a something that was a positive that brought to you in your life and or maybe it was a negative or something like that, that uh, kind of carries along with you. So I want to say one thing that I know that uh, kind of brought a positive in my life uh, listing uh, was uh, being more positive, being uh, positive about myself, uh, self encourage encouragement. Uh, so I know prior to going into the military, I was a uh, doubt. I doubted myself a lot. I uh, didn't have much, uh, and much pride at all in myself uh but when i got out uh, i realized uh, how much uh how much of a guy what how much of a man i was actually and, uh, it helped me uh it encouraged me to actually go out there and actually i had a hard time uh with uh relationships got out and i didn't really give a shit about relationships i just went out and did my thing and you know ultimately it ended up uh, getting me ran into uh, my wife so i think that's a a, a big thing that uh, i think it worked out well do it on my on our own page. Hell That's pretty yeah. dope, man. Um, because I think mine gonna be short and quick. I don't know what I got from being a grunt. And what I mean by that, I'm just talking about what I learned from going through basic training and going through that process. Since I didn't do the active duty thing as a grunt, that's a different thing. But what I learned going through basic training process, that was my second basic training. So I ain't gonna lie, I wasn't that impressed. <laughs> It was different from 99 to 2002. I'm not going to say it wasn't challenging to me because they hit me with something at 43rd AG. Yeah, that's 43rd in Georgia, 30th at Missouri. Huh? It it was uh, 30th whenever I got into Georgia. Oh, okay. Well, then I'm wrong then. 30th. Well, shit, I don't know. I told you I've been to two of them. One was 43rd. (laughs) <laughs> 30th. So, but again, I think I, we've been losing our minds right. anyway. I can't, I can't remember the next week. My wife like, you don't remember this shit? You came and stopped like drive me. <laughs> if you remember shit, why the hell you got me? So driving? look, what did, what did, what did, what did, what did shooter killer wolf learn from being a grunt? I don't Man. remember shit. But the oh, aim my. my target, aim my sights no, on the target and lay it down. No, I was just messing with oh, you, man. No. No, but uh, I remember when I got the 30th AG, it was different for me coming in as a uh, a prior service. Like, so for me, it was different for us. They got us off the bus. And when everybody else was going through the little Rick and Morales and this, that, and the third, we had to go in and do our little quick in process. And then they like prior service, pulled us out and sent us off to our own bay, oh. our own thing. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. All so right. me, I didn't know that. me and those five guys that I came <laughs> with, when we got the 30th AG, it was me plus four other or three other guys. It was uh Wood. It was Wood. Yes, it's not. I'm about to tell you. So yeah, it was Smith, know. which was me. Then it was Wood from the 82nd. And then it was um uh, my buddy, my battle that slept next to me. He was prior service. Well, he, was he, he was a fister. He was a fister. He was a forward observer. Uh, his name was Davis. That was the dude that rolled his ankle and thought he was the man. Bro, you got some good memories. Yeah, I his name. I remember the drill so hard. His stuff. name was Davis. And I don't, uh, I don't honestly, all oh, I don't have the other guy name, but you remember the little uh, foreigner Short dude? dude? Yeah. Oh, no, the for, Father the, Time? Yeah, sure. No, not Father Time beat my meat off. Been the meat off. Yeah, not that him. Was part of time. But the other dude, he was quiet. He was more, he was probably more Middle Eastern. Older guy. I oh, he so. was, he didn't look older, but he came in with us. He was quiet. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. But anyhow, the four of us came in together. When we got the 30th AG, got off the bus and all that, they put us over in barracks. Mm -hmm. And we was over in barracks for like mm, four days or so. You know what I'm saying? Four days or so. And all we did was went to the PX shop, smoke. I ain't smoke cigarettes, but they smoke, dip, do whatever. And then they hit us off one day like, yo, you got a PT test before you oh. go down here. <laughs> like a PT test. Like, hey, we pry servers. <laughs> right. We just well, look, get, you know, go through Let me shit. ask you this. Do you remember... Uh, you remember Drill Sergeant Drayton? Hell yeah. This short black dude. He wasn't there long. Yeah, he was in a different platoon because I, I ran his bay by mistake and they got to call the names. I'll be that bitch. He like, we don't see your fucking name. What the fuck you doing? It that little oh. son got on me, man. Oh, Kibby. Who we got? You spent three weeks at 30 of AG because you couldn't do push-ups. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. It say because of the backlog. <laughs> oh, okay. I had to scream for that. I'm like, keep it to yourself. But no, hey, man. Hey, so, hey, now, exactly. We had people trying to kill it. themselves in 30th AG. Yeah. What? Yeah. Try to hang himself with a sheep. At 30th AG? Why he ain't much coming to that shit? Yeah, you can still eat cake and ice cream at the end. <laughs> <laughs> You're cool. And at the 30th, just get bald. They don't even holler at you at the 30th. They save all that for when you get down there. But I won't <laughs> go too long. I'm going to leave it alone. Stop singing my song. Anyhow, man, my second time around, and I remember my old readiness NCO um, in the National Guard. He was just ragging on me and telling me how hard infantry was going to be for me. There you go. I was about to be a real man and all this stuff. I was there for that. Queen Miles Miles. Okay, that's what's up. But I was going to be a real man and, and all that stuff, What's man. up, brother? That's my homie, Miles. Good, okay, see, I didn't know if that was my homeboy. I'm like, my homeboy, Miles, was at the 30th AG? Yes. But uh, so anyhow, man, I think for me being a little bit older than both of y'all, I think that I was expecting the Army and, 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 and the infantry to be a lot harder than what it was. But again, I was older. I was like 22 to 22 to 24. And when your first time you been, went in, was it 99? 90? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, tough, so like from that. 99 to 2002, that three-year difference changed. But it helped me to... They actually punch you probably yeah. back then. No, they didn't punch you in 99. I'll be able to break That's what I thought they was going to do. They shit. couldn't. I oh. watched a drill sergeant bop a dude in his head with his hat. Mm. Like, you know, they had that brim. I and seen he kept hitting him on the bridge of the nose till he cried. I, I seen him motherfucker <laughs> get fucked up with that on that um, hand grenade, right? Ooh, Ooh, yeah. yeah. Get oh, boy, I think bitch. he would. He yeah. Man, that motherfucker took a body slam that motherfucker, man. Was that dude, boss? Man. That body slammed him? I think. I or was think. it the other dude that was talking about the uh, Bro, soldier of the month? Who wasn't there long with the Suburban? Man. I'll be forgetting. Somebody man. slammed. It, 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 I, it was, somebody got slammed. So anyhow, infantry being a grunt was good for me. Being a black guy from Detroit, thinking that you hard, thinking that you tough, thinking that you got it all figured out. I realized when I got to the infantry, although I was tough, I wasn't tough in the way that the infantry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I wasn't tough in that way. So, but you know, in that sense, man, it made me. It helped to shape me who I am today. Yeah, so yeah. earlier I was saying I don't know what I learned or what I got, but I did get a lot of discipline. And if I ain't getting nothing else, I got family members here oh, and folks. there. I got I got family members. It, it helped me learn to uh, work as a team. Seriously, work as a team and look at the bigger picture, not just about what I wanted. Hey, I also I also uh, learned uh, 
I can go to, like uh, Wolf was uh, Killer Wolf was talking about Big Sarge about having a memory. Uh, I have uh, I have a memory whenever I drive somewhere. I, I don't I only have to drive there once because I pay attention to my surroundings at all times. So that's one thing that got instilled into me. I pay attention to everything that that, that goes on and around me. Hell uh, yeah, man. See, with me, man, it's time, it really um brought me into um you know becoming a man. Basically, I was like eighteen when I went in that bitch. So. Yeah, up. you young buck, weren't you? Fucking up in Baton Rouge. Okay. I ain't weighing I ain't weighing no more than 125, 130 pounds. Wait. You know what I'm saying? It taught me, you know, right it taught me a lot of shit how to carry yourself. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Have pride in your motherfucking self, bro. Um, it taught you how to be in the belly of the beast and know that you know a couple people on your side that you go get out that bitch. You know what I'm saying? It taught me, it taught me life, life process. You know what I'm saying? For as when shit get hard, don't fucking give up. You know, it's a light at the end of the tunnel. And then basically with me getting back my first tour, going through anger management, all that bullshit, that was my toughest time. Getting back drinking, you know, you, you just got introduced to the shit in war, you know what I'm saying? Then getting back, you yeah. know, I got through that shit. And, you know, it taught me, man, taught me how to be strong, man, tougher than iron, bro. Just a cold world, you got to get cold with it. That's all you got to do, man. That's it. Taught me yeah. about brotherhood. Everybody, you know, everybody that's blood ain't family. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it, it taught me a lot of shit, bro. White, black, all that shit. We all came together for a cause. Bro, I had, um, what, let me see. I had Russians in my platoon. Um, Manachinko, they know what I'm talking about. Um, I had Albanian. We had Puerto Ricans, uh, Filipinos, Mexicans, yeah. blacks, whites. We all came together for a common cause to blow and kill some shit. And we came out that bitch, you know, salute to all my gladiators that passed and all that shit. But, you know, it taught me a lot of shit, man. It taught me a lot of shit. It taught me more about brotherhood. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. So, Whiskey Charlie, my question for you is, as I come right back jumping in questions, my question go. my question for you is, Whiskey Charlie, you bringing this to our attention. What is it for you specifically that, you know, that you learned and made you want to um, reach out and see what the other grunts learn, you know what I'm saying, from being a grunt? Maybe some of them was like cops, nowadays cops. And I don't, no offense to no cops. Don't get all sensitive. But what I mean by that, some of y'all was soft in high school. Oh, some of y'all was soft in middle school. Some, some of y'all was now. well, we are some soft now. Well, some of y'all, it is what it is. Put but a pair, then put a pair of DCUs on there, come back, they still soft. Well, they ain't wearing DCUs, they wearing Marte cam. Now they don't even are in uniform. You know, they, they go walk around their little neighborhood with the shit on the they ain't walk. With the same shit on. Ooh, wait, I feel I feel so crazy when I'm out. On. I feel so crazy when I'm out rocking because I feel like I'm disrespecting my uniform. You too, oh, dude. Because I'm oh, wearing dude. my uniform to cut off shorts, and then I got the shirt on, but then I got a full beard. <laughs> but you, you know, they got people that come up to you. Well, how's that uniform? Which oh. you? I'm like, come on, bro, don't come up on. Listen to me. One thing yeah. that I I definitely dislike about living in Texas and being in the military is going. Anywhere near Colleen, Ooh, Fort Hood, Texas. Kill town. That is one thing that the infantry grunt speak gave to me that I want to give back. Fort hey. Hood, Texas. Not Fort Hood, because Fort Hood is it is what it is. But Colleen, once you must. once you get outside of that gate at Fort Hood, it it's a hundred million sergeant majors running around looking to bust your, bust your balls, man. <laughs> For any say, reason. Uh, when I was there, you could go to child and back to your uh, bunk. bunk. It was like prison. Pre I fucked up and tried to use the phone, got caught in hand. <laughs> Watch what, what he went. What he talking about? Is it um what's he on CQ? What did you do, Kimmy? You ain't never lie. What you at? See, I'm about to what's the name? Uh, my you you watch, yeah. You watch party, right? Yeah, okay, cool. So what I'm about to do, I'm about to pop off this watch party and I'm about to bring some people in if I can. Yeah, to talk yeah. to and kick it with us and talk about why they chose the infantry. And then, with me, and then bro, I'm gonna shut up and let you do what you do. With me, hey. bro, I feel that just because we're out of the military 
that shouldn't be our best years of our life. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We should we should continue to try to gain, you know, more good yeah. years, not just be, you know, shit bags. Cause I still got it in my head. I still feel like I got platoon sergeants watching me and shit. Like, but yeah. you turn yeah. into a shit bag. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Hey, so, that, that's also another reason why I bring it. That's why I brought up the topic, man. Hey, I, you know, the whole reason why I brought up this topic is I want people to really think that, uh, it, it, you know, you're out, but uh, you're not technically out mentally. You're not always out, you know, right. and it, you really got to take what you, what you gain from being an infantryman. Uh, so maybe it's something again, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's, you know, your, you know, your drive, maybe it's a uh, physical or whatever else it was, maybe it's something that to help you drive to who you are. And you got to take that positive and, you know, strengthen it even more. That's when I took a test through, uh, through work and uh, it was about, uh, you know, seeking out your top five, uh, you know, you know, your top five things, the best about you, your best abilities and really driving the best five. Because no matter if you got a negative, you always want to try to strengthen the negative. But with those top five, you want to strengthen it more because that's what people feed off of you, off those top five of, of you. So. You know, you, you got to really seek out what's because uh, they always said, you know, when whenever you top five, you're always going to rely on those, and you know that you know those are your strengths. You, know, you go to school, you, you, in school, you had maybe maybe you were a math kid, maybe you were a science kid, you know, whatever else. You didn't like like myself. I was a math kid. I wasn't I wasn't a uh, I wasn't a history or whatever else. Man. So I relied on my math skills. Oh, God. You know what, too? Well, we me getting out. I invite a good friend. It, the top, no it taught it. me to focus more you at least two on the shit that I ain't good at. For us, the shit, my insecurities uh-huh. that I ain't good at. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. always love to build on our shit that we good at, but it takes a man to look back and actually focus on wow. those things that you Why fear you or, basic? you know, try to cover them things. But, man, okay, look cool. here. I wouldn't change the motherfucking thing. Right, being that, with you, I'm going to keep on talking to When you I was in that bitch, man, you know what I'm saying, we got the respect, all that shit. We talked to our shit, and it was what it was. Huh? I wouldn't change yeah. the thing, bro. Yeah. No, no, no. Basically, the the man. I'm in 99. I what I did. I love what I did. Hey, yeah. like a... Uh, uh, old yeah. big sergeant that said, yeah. that, uh, man, you know, if you didn't learn anything really, anything like you definitely you know, got family and friends, you know, maybe that wasn't blood, but at the same time, you established a uh, a friendship that uh, can never be any stronger than any other well, time. See, most of our brothers they should know, but just because we out, you know, what I'm saying, you even when your family turn your back on you, you still got this grunt family, you know, what I'm saying, we grunt brothers, <laughs> what I call it. I'd be like, that's my grunt brother right there. I can see you in the motherfucking bar today or tomorrow. About to get your ass whooped, whatever. About to get jumped. Like, man, that's my motherfucking grunt brother. We about to get loose in this bitch. What's good? You know what I'm dedication. <laughs> I, I learned a lot, of, a lot of dedication for the people to my right and my left because I don't know if y'all pay a lot of attention to this, but I say, I'm going to say this again, and I said it before. My friend, my brother right here, you would think on the outside looking in that I've known him all my life, but we had three, two and a half to three months max in basic training Yeah, that we, that we had the opportunity to meet each other. So another thing that basic training gave me and being a grunt gave me is, is really learning the nature of a man's heart. Because when you go through basic training and you become a grunt and you go into infantry, even the dudes that you think is tough, that hold the, the identifier, you see that they might not be as tough as they portrayed to be in the first couple of days. Right. But it was different with this cat. He was willing to do whatever I asked him to do, and I wasn't even in charge of him. And I don't know what it was that made him rock with me like that, but whatever we built, when we seen each other 12 years later, I'm talking 12 years later. I don't know if he was dead. I was dead. <laughs> I didn't even know if he remembered me, but I knew I remember him. But 12 years later, that bond that we built in basic training came through when we seen each other. It was like, yeah. hey, what's happening? Uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it helps you build, it helps you build a bond and strengthen in with other people that you may not build in the civilian community because they ain't went through what you're going through. Yeah, then you, 
then some of them you'll never know there's some killing motherfuckers. I got you could walk around. I, we had a nerdy dude in the motherfucking arm in our unit, man. He was nerdy in the mother. <laughs> so let me hit these Most comments. Killed. What they got? Hold on, yeah. real quick. Two two people jump. So earlier, Kibby was saying, and that's who I was talking to when I hopped on the phone real quick because I was gonna bring him on camera but um earlier he was saying when he was at 30 if you know he couldn't go he couldn't do nothing but what go to child and back to your bunk and it was like prison and that was in 98 so you can see how the shift had changed from 98 to 2002 the virus threat protection. but what the fuck they jumped from the uh, 30th ag you ain't about to break no balls it wasn't too high oh hold on but do you remember at 30th not 30th I don't do know you remember when he was in basic though in the starships and the small white kid whooped the big white kid and attempted to kick him out the window and he was falling through the window holding no it was in first platoon he was holding no hanging halfway out bro the window, i don't even bro. remember the cold part <laughs> the cold part my mind is split my shit split like a um hacks in the motherfucking piece of wood <laughs> <laughs> well, what you got for us whiskey charlie man all right, not, not nothing like that, but uh, y'all sitting there talking about stories and basic, man. Hey, man, that, that takes back some memories right there. Uh, you know, I remember, you know, the whole, you know, uh, sweet thing. You know, weren't allowed to have sweets or anything else, you know, Ooh. out in the field. Ooh. You weren't allowed to have anything. I'm I sorry. remember uh, some of the battles uh, trying to sneak <laughs> up. <laughs> not like that. Y'all didn't hear that on that side. That. I heard they it, they though. Did. <laughs> ain't sweet like that. I like to eat sweets. Let me clear it up. They probably heard. They be like, man, what do you say? Hey, man, I'm about yeah. to move my chair over. Yeah. Let, me, <laughs> let me clear that up. Hey, man, love Thursday's already passing. Yeah. Hey, right. Hey, man, love Thursday was on Thanksgiving, bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, ain't nothing like that, baby. Ain't nothing sweet. <laughs> <laughs> ain't nothing so sweet, hey, Bob Kelly. <laughs> nah, you say you like to eat those sweets back in the day. Hey, uh, you Christ still get folks. your Krispy Kremes now, don't you? Man, bro, I had some for motherfucking Thanksgiving. I ate a whole, <laughs> a whole fucking dozen of them bitches. Damn. I ate my water, too. Oh, and you ate the 10? I ate 10. Hey, look, man, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. And, but you know, another thing that, that being, what you saying that, what you saying that right there, you gave your daughter two and you kept 10 for yourself. Although the army taught us teamwork and, and building unity in the infantry, it taught you how to learn to individually make sure you take care of you, self care hold first, up, and up. then buddy aid. This was my unity with the donuts. Ooh. My daughter doesn't need those. <laughs> I work out every day. So she, you know, I was helping her, right? You was, yeah, that's I got teamwork. You. That teamwork make the dream work. <laughs> That's it. Hey, I remember in, in the chow hall line, they they would separate it. If you, if you would, uh, if you deserve sweets, they put you over in the the. Or if you deserved uh, fatty yeah, foods, they put you in the line. If you were heavyweight, they put you in the salad bar line. I don't. I ain't hating. I ain't getting no sweets. The sweets in our no, group is sweets either. I don't eat sweets sweet. either. But they, they put you in. They put you in the line of a salad bar line or food. Uh, the regular chow line. The regular with actual something. If you needed to gain weight, they put oh, you in. Well, uh, food food. Yeah, I was in that group. Yeah, that group. yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Sweets for me was like uh in our basic training. Hey, you, it was MREs, yeah. man. Was switching up the uh Skittles and stuff. <laughs> if you only have, I think it was a, a, a 250 or a 275 or better, and uh basic training for us. You would not get no sweets. You get shit. We was in Alpha 247, which used to be a regular IBC, uh, regular BCT. Renegades. But we was the first uh, OSIC IBCT infantry unit through there. So they wanted to prove a point with us. I think our shit was Renegades. Oh, so yeah, it was, was something like yeah, that. Renegades, we were second yeah. platoon Renegades. Yeah. So we didn't have no sweets. And if they did give you sweets, it was to make you throw it up after you walked out of child. Mm. And I think we went on that leave that time. Even I got Ooh. like four of them ice cream cookies in that bitch. Ooh -wee. Hey, the best beer still to this day was the beer that we that got. Was Corona. We got the Corona. I wasn't even old to buy the shit. You I got, did. <laughs> got my first tattoo. One of my first tattoo with him right here, mm -hmm. man. Sure but did. Yeah, I got it, mine right here too. Yeah, we then we had to pull the line. <laughs> No sir. And Dubois, I remember him coming up to me saying, I should fuck you up right mm. now. <laughs> nah, he slapped the chest. He slapped. Like, he did, but he whispered that to me because he like, yeah. 
I know you the older one. And I know so you I, yeah. <laughs> I saw him be over there like, yeah. Well, I, you know, I know. Because when like. he walked in the door, me and you, I think, was dancing through the kill zone. Mm -hmm. we <laughs> I don't know Coronas, man. That was the best beer. So, well, you know, just because it was taken away from you, it mm -hmm. feels like it tastes better. Even more sweets. Like, yeah. you, you know, a basic train, you can't have that shit. Mm -hmm. So when you get that shit, if you can get it in basic, it just tastes better. That's yeah. Absolutely right. Yeah. Hey, the military also taught me how to eat fast. Everybody always mm -hmm. had to ask me, like, why the hell are you still standing up? And why are you stand up and eating and just go out there and get back at it? That's mm -hmm. hey, it's, it's trained and instilled in me, man. I'm keep my head down. Do this. Scarf it. Go. My motherfucking arm. Um, what is it? My little what they call it on um, military boot camp for badass kids taught okay. me that. The motherfuckers had we had some shit, bro. Uh, enforcer, like if you fucked up in class because you had to go to class mm -hmm. and GD and shit. This enforcer, he'll smoke your ass all day. He bury you in the sand, all that shit, <laughs> and you get up and you gotta get out running. And when he walk, you have to run around him. Wherever he walk at on the post, you running around him the whole oh, time. Oh no, bro. whoever with you, y'all running around him. He's smoking your ass all day. That's what I went through before I went to Mexico. Now, what are you was running like a you know yeah. a slave coming from massive front? <laughs> and then <laughs> me, he's like, I, that was the first thing that came to bro. my mind. Listen, uh, people would see me and be like, Oh, Smith <laughs> gonna be good on the PT test. He didn't knocked out 50, 60, 70 push ups the in no push -up, time. This guy, he was. Sit up, he good, he all right. So the two mile shit, you see his calves, he good, bruh. Calves how much, are like tree trunk. How much time I got, Sarge? You say I got fifteen thirty. I'll be back in fifteen twenty nine and a half, bro. This motherfucker <laughs> legs bigger than mine. I, I do squat and everything. That motherfucker do do nothing but put a rucksack on. This infantry talking motherfucker, that motherfucker calves <laughs> about that big, man. Well, about that big, man. Infantry taught me that. All right, yeah. whiskey Charlie, I'm done. There you, you go. got it. There you go. Oh, hold on. Let me read this last comment because I don't know if you've seen them like I'm seeing. Yeah. Uh oh, your homeboy said preach for one. We was talking about something Colleen. Then he said Colleen is horrible. I second that emotion like Smokey That's Robinson. Kill time, man. And then uh um, McGinnis, he said, Yep, at least two jumped. Because you were talking earlier, Sutton, about people attempting to kill themselves. At 30 of AG, and he said they had at least two people jump but at 30. I, well, where did you jump from? I don't know. It wasn't no big buildings. What I knew. Where did you jump from at 30 of AG? I keep thinking to myself, I think when I you came know. out of the child hall, though, when you, it was a, it was a, it was a floor above the child hall, hall. like a hallway or yeah. something like that. Bro, it ain't that deep. It wasn't that hard. Are you uh, it hard? wasn't that bad. Hey, but I, I can tell you what type of family, what type of raising they came from, though, from that point. And you know, unity is the watchword. Excuse me. Going up. Sure. Good. You still in there? Yeah, I didn't have hiccups for like two and a half, three Yeah, they got, no, Unity know. is the watchword that I use with me and my wife right now. And that was something I definitely know I learned from being in the infantry. And I am a... Uh, I'm, I'm a, like a girl when it comes to hygiene. No offense to the women that's listening and supporting their husband or boyfriend or whatever. I'm like a girl when it comes to hygiene. Like in the bathroom, everything got to be clean. It got to be sweet. It got to be I'm not using the bathroom if it's nasty. I ain't gonna lie, but I can't infantry, do that shit either. But the infantry Porter John. pulled that right out of me when I was sitting in the woods, hugging a tree to take a shit. And I was looking at my battle right across from me. And it was just like, yo. This is unity. This is about really having your brother Hold back up, to bro. your right and your left. You know what? <laughs> ain't no doing this. Back. I could talk some shit, but my daughter next room about Porter Johns. Oh, don't but, talk that story. But you know, the little yeah, I know. You know, know. I ain't about to get it done. You know, I don't know who I'm talking. Hey, you that's, know what? That's, I got I gotta say this. That's a bonfire look, story. Look, there. So, cause I was walking about a week or two ago. When uh, infantry definitely taught me how to ruck, I was rucking about a week or two ago, and I was listening to our session when we was at at my boy house. Oh, I probably did say, yeah. it. Yeah, I I did. I'm, on, I'm on wax. I'm on. I'm on. Nah, I'm gonna delete that though because I, I listened to that and I'm like, man, this is a good stuff in here. But I heard that part because yeah. we was talking about Porter Johns and the and the death rate. 
of the kids lost in the port of Jaws in Iraq. Right. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> and that 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 prepares you for anything <laughs> in this world. Hey, if, you, if you can roll like that and do that, if you, you can survive. You go on the port of Jaws and kill kids in Iraq. And that's all I'm going to say. You figure out the rest. Mm. <laughs> if you can go on the port of Jaws and kill kids Put in your Iraq. Best on. <laughs> Put your vest on. I would at least take my vest off and put it nah, on the floor. I got this <laughs> camo pack scroll. Got my water, everything, boy. <laughs> All right, hold on. All right, now I'm gonna turn it back over to whiskey. Let me read this this long one from Team Miles. Uh, shooters, shooters partner. Thank we you for supporting us, bro. We need to invite him in. Well, invite him. Can you? What's the name? Can you? You have see. to go off live, and then you can call him on your. You can direct call him, and if you want to see him, you can set oh, him up oh, on this little right. thing. Oh, he said, what did I get from 10 years being 11B? There's no such thing as personal accountability. Wait, what did I get from 10 years 11B? There's no such thing as personal accountability. You're accountable for everyone to your left and right, and your left and right. I have never let that go, and I have fully implemented that into my life. I'll be trying to be cool and read with glasses on. Implemented that into my life. The funniest thing I ever worked with, the funniest thing is I have worked with a many other branches of service and that is not the standard across the board. It sure is not. Mm. The mental standards uh, don't fucking challenge me. I love it when someone tells me I can't accomplish something. My mind shit. quickly snaps back to was this motherfucking. <laughs> That's <laughs> absolutely right. Yeah. That's 100% correct. We do what the fuck we want to do, man. I'll stop. But here's the thing. I'm trying. You I'm asked that question earlier. Right yeah. Invite. Still you asked that question earlier about um what your your topic was. What what did we learn from being a grunt and how that affected us and how that helped us? And I want to say in the second part of that in my text, it was also you know, and if not, I want to pose this to you: What negative things did you take away from the military being a grunt? Negative. Because here's the thing, in, in the civilian society, what he said is very powerful and very true. And also with this post that I read, you quickly snap back into the infantry like, fuck this, I can do whatever I need to do. I'm about to run through this wall like juggernaut. But that might not be the way when you to. get into the civilian world and you have to operate today. Hey, Willie, so then you bring some negative aspects with you too. Willie T was our juggernaut. He run through walls. The motherfucker look like 50 cents. That nigga run through walls. That ain't the old boy that jumped out the track and was swimming across and saved nobody. Who oh, you, was talking about? You talking about Sarnay. Oh, okay. That's Sarnay. Sarnay. We got blew up. He swam across the motherfucking uh, river where I got blew up at. So he about to kill the motherfucker. <laughs> that's a bad man. But yeah, um, what, what, what was I at? What was we at just now? Um, what, the negative? Mm -hmm. that, we the took negative yeah. from that you didn't brought back with you? Hmm. Or that you didn't took from it? Or, or and I'm not saying this is negative, but I'm saying this yeah. could be considered negative so for some people in a civilian sector. I can't and it say could be, this negative, it, but no. that's that's one of them that I and it could from. be negative from some people that's not at the tip of the spear because you got every it's a sword in the infantry. Follow me, and everybody not at the tip of the spear in the infantry. Right. So you could have brought back that arrogance, that bravado, like I'm infantry, oh. I'm the shit, follow oh. me, look at me. Hold and up. you probably ain't never done nothing because we got them out there too. Hold so up. I'm just saying, yeah. what did you bring back negative that could be causing some challenges in your life that you need to shake to be a better version of you? Because think about this. When this came to me about starting Grunt Speak and about helping other veterans, it was negative shit that I brought back. I brought home Iraq with me. I brought home the way we did Iraq, trash piles on the street, people out to get me. So everybody, the enemy, you know what I'm saying? I brought a lot of things that didn't work in the civilian world that I had to change over a period of time too. Right. Well, with me, man, um, I guess I did kind of bring a little arrogance back for us thinking that, you know what I'm saying? You need to push through your situations. Um, never let anything break you and shit like that. And mm -hmm. when you know, some people is actually or uh, some of our infantry buddies are actually, you know, suffering in a different way. 
you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. to say just, just, just push through it or get through it, you know what I'm saying? So I did kind of bring a little arrogance back, like, you know, anything is possible to get through, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, with me, I'm a loner. I don't give a fuck about none of that bullshit. I, I, I could go my life without being around no motherfucking body, except for my wife and my kid. But at the same time, oh, yeah, I brought that back, too. Being alone. Well, I don't, know. I don't think that's bad. I don't think being alone is bad. What do you think? Uh, for me, that sucks. Because for oh, me, that's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's, well, no, here's the thing. I want most people will call well, uh, on the outside. Most people call me an extrovert because I love people and I like talking to people. You I enjoy really do, people, man. And I really do. But uh, I did this some dude, research. This dude here could have. He could walk up the street. And somebody be like, hey, what's up, bro? And Smith will have, you know, he'll, he'll have a whole full conversation and they'll be, you know, like yeah. it'll be popping though. But, yeah. but they'll be spilling their guts to him. Like, like, I don't know, man. You might need to get you like a talk show host. Hey, something. man, that's why I'm a life coach and I'm working on building that thing. It just takes time. But I seen your neighbor, man. She was just spilling everything. Oh, Karen. And you had her name, Karen. You had Karen. She was spilling everything. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, like let me get the mic up. Too. Yeah, like I'm like, man, well, this is what we at right now. That's what we at right man, now. That's what it is. Because this is what it is. Because being in the infantry, it taught you how to work with all different people and all different walks of life. Because if you had to go serve overseas, and no offense to my infantry cats that never had to go to combat or never did a peacekeeping mission and had to deal with anybody outside of garrison or being in the field. Like one thing's for sure in the infantry that a lot of other MOSs don't have or a lot of people in the military don't possess. They don't I don't think they possess that mindset, that that switch to turn. If you call your buddy. Yeah, you got to cancel that oh, switch. God. Yeah, you just did that switch to turn on and off to go from being a warrior and a gladiator, as you called it back for Thanksgiving, to being a warrior or a gladiator to being just a regular person. Because we don't really know how to turn that off sometimes. You've been trained to kill, kill, kill. We shoot to kill. You know what I'm saying? Aim, center, mass. And now you got to switch and turn that off and take a step back when things change. So another thing that the infantry taught me or being a grunt taught me is how to process information and how to process information quick. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We walk into a room and you might not... You know this, but you might not pay it no attention, and your wife might not know this because mine don't, or she might because she's been around you long enough and her parents are military. But we walk into a room as infantry and we have laid out the whole scope how to get out, what's my exits, what's going on, who here, who there. You know what I'm saying? You yeah, ain't got yeah. a visual, especially if you, especially <laughs> if you was up on QRL. If you was on QRL, you wrote like, hey, we got this out. I'm like, well, shoot the motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck y'all calling us out there? This guy here is playing the IEDs. They flying mm -hmm. over them shit. Shoot them then. What we got to come out for? Go, go shoot, shoot them, them, Elizabeth. So we, we roll out there in the Bradley's and shit, get blew up and shit. You know what I'm saying? Just shoot the motherfucker, man. You see him laying the shit. R-O-E. But yeah. R-O-E. Can't just be shooting people freely. At least not when I'm out there. And uh, definitely not in 9 and 10. You going to jail. Oh, you going oh, to jail? 607? You, going you probably to... could get away with some stuff. Nah, you going to jail? <laughs> they had some badass um, no talkers. Battalion commanders on um, rainy battalion commander rain. Bro, bro, look here. That motherfucker told us go to the job that we gave them time to get out that bitch. They came mm -hmm. up there with their little pickaxe and all that shit like they ain't going nowhere. So we gave them time. So he told us whoever in that motherfucker Clear them out, that bitch. And we pushed them back to their little moss. We couldn't shoot their moss. Mm -hmm. So they was in their little moss booting up, but we pushed them all out. And we went in the motherfucking the Joff man with motherfucking hatches down. We came out that bitch, ground guy in the tracks up out that bitch. Here, you know, but, yeah. here's the thing. A lot of us has brought a lot of uh, uh, a lot of things back from the military. And, uh, and no... No shade to the military, but it's not all good for everybody because some people kill everything moving. Absolutely, you already know. Because some people leave up out of there and they not uh, they not aware of what's going on in the real world. Because they, hey, Jody, 
Oh, yeah. see, I don't got no Jody. Well, no, but I got a Jody story, but it ain't my own. So, <laughs> as a team leader, it's certain things you have to deal with yeah. when you in the infantry, yeah, yeah. and Jody is one of those things that you gonna hear about frequently. Yeah, yeah, Jody. What you got on Jody over there, Whiskey Charlie? Because you look like you've been over there studying something, my, he look or like, you look like you over there mixing some alcohol together, creating a concoction. Which it, one is it? It kind of look like he got Jody beer back there in the yard or something. <laughs> talk about that incriminate myself right i never i never had a jody man because i didn't have a woman when i went over i kept it single i kept my mind focus on me i let i made sure when i went overseas even when i went into basic my mind was clear it was about me now i understand that some people you know are were in depth with the relationship when they went in so they had you know they had that significant other that they had to be with but uh, myself, nah, man. I went in uh, clear minded, made sure I didn't have anybody that uh, was going to slow me down, had my mind focused anywhere else yes, other than me and uh, Pamela Lee taking care of me. You weren't single though when you went over there, was you? Yeah. You were no, not. I, mean, I just I mean, talked to a whole I bunch of girls. Were... I was talking to a whole bunch of girls, bro. <laughs> He good. He married. Now that's the past tense. You didn't know your wife in when we were in Iraq in 09, did you? I met her while I was over there off of uh off of, offline. So you wasn't single. I was single. You was not. You was dating Snyder. He had the handcuffs <laughs> on you. <laughs> oh, don't you be coming, hey, don't you be coming to my room with no Cavalier on only. <laughs> hey, you know that you know within the dirty third, that's gonna never die down, right? At least not for no. me right now. Uh -oh. You're hey, one hey. It's all good. Hey, look. Hey, I was in first platoon, but third platoon has always been notorious. Mm -hmm. I don't care what platoon you in, mm -hmm. they have been notorious yep. for like some of the most drunkest, crazy Jeez motherfuckers you ever seen, man. Third platoon in yep. every company. Yep. Yeah. Has always been some of the craziest right. motherfuckers. Cause look, company. we was. <laughs> I've been, I'm, I've been first, our first platoon the whole time. But you know, second platoon, who I was a part of, for me and and Kibby and our group of band of brothers, we were good. But third platoon, third always was a man. whole hey. different animal. It's all <laughs> a whole different breed. Third <laughs> platoon, man. Maybe because they the last platoon. It's like the last kid, about like it. me. It's like the last. About it. You know, what, you know what that is. Two in the one. In the <laughs> going over there. Even in our company, we be like, "What the fuck going over there?" Third platoon, man. Ooh, we. Miles say two thousand and nine. MySpace. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah. I I was too oh, old to get on that stuff. I wasn't too old, but I was just like my mindset was too old. Like. I wasn't even on a computer like that, but MySpace, I remember that. Man, I pay. Hey. You ain't gonna take it straight to the face. Oh, he been doing that. <laughs> I know, I'm just messing with him. Oh. Hey, you, you the boost him up. He been doing that. <laughs> hey, I need to leave him alone because in the next five minutes, he's gonna be going crazy on there. Because I think the only thing <laughs> the he, third's gonna come out of me. He yeah. he mixing that Jack Daniels fire mm -hmm. with that Jack Daniels. Mm -hmm. He ain't got no juice in it. Mm -hmm. Straight, no chaser. That's it. Infantry. That's what it is. Infantry. Yeah. In you know, you know what that's like. Be the best mi mixologist ever. Oh no! You know what I heard though? I had some guys that I talked to, bro. Who's on that glass? Is that popcorn? <laughs> <laughs> hey. Who's on? Is that Jack? Is that supposed to be Jack Daniel? Who? No. Nice. Yeah. Got the whole kit. Man, that's right. Cause you showed that okay, picture. It had the shot glasses. Who in the hell gets alcohol for a Thanksgiving Day present? I ain't got mine. I'm hey, my, my, my contractors buy me stuff, man. That's hey, what's up. Son, my birthday, December 15th. You know what I need, man. I need that, that. You know what I need, man. December 15th. <laughs> remember, <laughs> remember your boy. You might have to hit him in the DMs and shoot him a message to wherever you want to be uh, so he can get it to you. Or uh, we just yeah. got to drive out to Cairo or Viger. 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 Vider, Viger, Vider, Vider. I think yeah. there are people out there, Not yeah, personally, but friends. Man, I'm gonna invite to the wedding. Today. That's what's up in Houston, man. He right there, he's right there. Got a wedding. 
Hour and a half away from you. Well, you got to come to the wedding in Houston in April. Oh, that's easy. I can do that. We actually actually having the wedding. I was in the military. I was, you know, old young ass dude. We got married at the courthouse and shit. So we actually have a wedding in April. I had two out of three of my weddings at the courthouse, bro. At the courthouse. Cheaper that way. For y'all fools that ain't going to be married long, especially if you're in the infantry, you might want to go to the courthouse and say your BAH, say your little substance allowance, yeah. save all that shit. Your go food. to the courthouse because you know, you know, uh, <laughs> no stains Gladys who you met at the strip club. <laughs> <laughs> you get on that plane, she gone. She gone with Jody. She gone, <laughs> she gone with Jody, bro. She gone, dog. So, you might well go and go to the courthouse, spend your check on the 15th, and, and get it right. Cause on the first, it's gonna be a wrap. She probably see, <laughs> she probably see you some dirty couple dirty draws of shit while you overseas. Hey, some shit. look, 06, I think it was in my last situation, as I call it with my wife, or me and my wife, we were separated. And I was messing around with somebody. They sent me a pair of undergarments. And you know how that goes. That's some good shit. Oh, yeah. I passed I it around that. to the whole platoon. Everybody need a sniff. It wasn't my main. So <laughs> I'm tripping, though. No. This is not the person that I was married to. Because if it was, then I wouldn't have did that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But you and you in Iraq and you get some undergarments with a, a nice smell in the bag, bro. <laughs> I, had, I had to raise the morale around there. What they say <laughs> in the bag. <laughs> so <laughs> what else did the infantry teach me? It taught old selfish Sarge how to share. You gotta share. You gotta <laughs> <laughs> Dang, that's a good Oh yeah, yeah. After you got, after you got that, that, that Jody let the people shared their pictures of their exes all around the place. Ooh, I don't know. Ooh, we didn't, yeah, we didn't have a phone. Yeah, yeah. 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 I had a phone in 06. I have a phone. I had a cell phone in Iraq in 06. I bro. think if we're doing this, a time, minute phone, <laughs> a card, a I minute have, phone in Iraq. Bro. I have no cell phone. All your money gone. You buying minutes. I had not me personally, but I had some Joes, man, who was dealing with Jody and other situations. And I don't know what they, they got out of infantry be attempting to say I made it through the infantry, basic train. I am infantry. But for a lot of people, it don't change who you are. Some people keep who they are when they came in and they're not willing to grow and move forward and let go of what they used to be. Because like you said earlier, when you get the basic training, they break you down. They break you down. They break you. Up. They break you all the way down to attempt to make everybody equal, and then build you up as a unit. But say, what's going on, Stafford? That's my homeboy yeah, right yeah, there. Oh, yeah, that's the homeboy. Oh man, Stafford, man. Oh, uh, Sergeant First Class Stafford. He was like our first squad leader. Oh, really? He was first squad leader, acting PSG a lot of times when he was in Iraq in 06, 07. You talking about a dude that knew his stuff and didn't give no fucks, and his 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 guys made it happen. Like two, three was the shit to me. Two, three was the shit. Sergeant Kid being our crew, he was the shit. But two, one was damn good. You got it. Two one was damn good. So Stafford you got is it. one of those guys that I looked up to and I admired because he would right. shoot you straight. He didn't bullshit you. You was fucked up. You was fucked up. I don't care mm -hmm. if everybody said you was great and you was the next best thing to America. No, he'll tell you straight up, smile, walk away, spit some snuff, and <laughs> sit. With me, man, we had what's um, up, Stafford? Guys, I'm tired. Saw on Chisholm, he on my page too. You know what I'm saying? He was more of a mentor, let us know mm -hmm. how shit rolled and shit like that, talking about the gun and everything. Man, you got to have them them old to. heads, you know what I'm saying, to. in the unit to bring that bitch together, man, because when we got back second tour, the old heads was leaving. Oh, yeah. And they they, they were putting everybody new crews, everything. I like, man, that about to be a shit show. Second hey, tour. man, listen to me. I want to say this. What the infantry taught me is this. Never volunteer for anything until you're back against the wall. Then volunteer for everything. My back was against the wall when the motherfucker told me they would give me all that money when I was going <laughs> to hey, hey, I was an 18-year-old man. Just, you know what I'm saying? Just graduated. I, you know, I know how to weld all that shit. But it's hey, like, I'm like, man, that money sounded good. And then the recruiter Hell sold yes. that bitch. Cheers is the man. Who's Cheers, bro? So I'm Cheers, man. Yeah, yeah, 
He taught us everything. He was a cool dude, bro. He just taught us everything, bro. That's Real. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. One, one, of the things I, one of the things I still bring from the military is, uh, you know, if you ever uh, get asked a question and nobody answers, everybody gets fucked up. And I always, uh, even at work, I'm the first one to answer, even if it's something wrong. They'd be looking at me like, why'd you even say anything, Justin? Like, you're stupid. Like, nah, if at least I'm wrong. I'm taking care of all y'all others. You're here. We're about to learn something if I'm wrong. You know what, son? I'll learn a day. You know what, son? If I worked with you, if I was up under you and you got in trouble, I'd be like, every fucking body getting this bitch do some fucking push up. Shut Ooh, the fuck up. Ooh, everybody. <laughs> they like, they'd be like, what do where y'all think we at, man? Man, who do push up? I like everybody do push up, but we'll build a unit though. It, at the home. Iron, and that's what, again, the infantry. Iron sharpens iron. You know what I'm saying? So if you. You only as strong as the weakest person in your group. Yep. And one thing that I loved about the infantry, like I said, this is by grunts, for grunts. Everybody is welcome, but everybody cannot and will not be a member. And I know Whiskey Charlie know this, and when I say this, I don't know if it's going to blow shoot of mine or not, because this haven't happened to a lot of infantry units. <clears throat> and 09... When we went to Iraq, we had three females attached to our unit. Oh, yep. We had Sarn Palai, P. Yep. We had Sarn Ab, who was married to Sarn Thibodeau. And yep. then we had one other person, a uh, specialist, Sansano. That blew my mind. But what it did also is it kept an ease in the peace. It was nice to have actual women in our unit that was attached to our headquarters department to where you could see them and you look, you know, you can have just conversation as mm. opposed to going out like a ravenous dog when you went to the PX and yeah. see them <laughs> them all, they have the body works after the <laughs> number. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was more of the it was more of the vanilla ice cream. You know, <laughs> that, that vanilla ice cream on that bitch. Is hey, that I, mean, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Even on the plane, when I'm I knew out, I crossed out, over, seven hours. All right, have a the great air night, smelled man. different. Man. Have a great night, uh, Stafford. Did you when you land it came back? Did the air smell? Hell different? yeah, it smelled a lot. Different. I smelled number perfume. Mike. Whiskey Charlie, what you got for us? I you know, uh, no, I definitely, uh, definitely know what to mean by the, uh, you know, having them over there. You know, like you said, it was just a different, uh, different feeling. But uh, at the same time, I can, I can let you know what this much. It was a lot of help because uh, they helped us out quite, uh, quite a bit while we we're over there. Uh, when it came to uh, everything that we needed to get taken care of, and she still reaches out to me and helps me out. And she's one that also reached out and helped me out with, uh, with the. Uh, my VA benefits. I reached out to her and she told me what I needed to do. So I'm still, of course, sitting back waiting. You know, hurry up and wait. You know, in the military is the VA is the same way. You know, you're gonna hurry up and wait. So I'm in my waiting process. That's one thing I learned from the military too. Patience. Hurry up and wait. And listen, to I'm, hey, I'm bro, up the waiting line. Hurry up and wait hey, forever. Bro, make sure you um make sure you go to an outsource um council or whatever. Okay. Don't go, go in house because <clears throat> they gonna screw you. They gonna fuck you. You good? You fine? Ain't nothing wrong with you. You go, good? No you go. go right now because they did they mail you them cards? They doing the the outpost shit now. You don't have to go to the VA. I shit. gotta reach out to them because it's time for me to do my what's up. I, I, I went to the, I went to an outsource uh, type person. I didn't go actually to the VA, so I went to an outsource. Oh, They're gonna send me somewhere. That's the best place, man. Big outsource. Sarge earlier was saying something. You talked about Abbott still mm -hmm. helping you out. And we talking about what have you learned from being a grunt and how has being a grunt helped you or hindered you? And Big Sarge Stafford was said one word, networking, network. And it took me back to what you said about Abbott just helping you out. It's kind of like when you look at fraternities, A, Phi, A, uh, Phi, Beta, Sigma, Omega, Psi, Phi, and Alpha, Kappa, or so whatever. All these fraternities is like it's a brotherhood that network and stick together and attempt to help one another move further in life. And that's what being in the military is. But when you in the infantry, it's like a special secluded group where they really go above and beyond to help you out. Because if you don't understand, if you're too dumb or too crazy or too just fucked up, whatever you want to call it, yeah. to understand what you just got yourself into, 
Then it's outside support units, such as Sergeant Abbott, Palayo, Sansano. It's other people out there to help you to see what you got yourself into. Because you're a young dude going into the infantry, Bro. thinking that you just about to run around, shoot some stuff, blow it up. And then you see the dude that's old in your unit. He like 27. <laughs> you see your future. You know what I'm saying? Bro, I think So networking is important to move around because... Once you become in the infantry, I think th this is just me. Y'all can correct me if I'm wrong. Once you get in the infantry, although the recruiters tell you how great and how glorious it is and how you can get out, mm. get these magnificent jobs and people going to love you and everybody going to be fighting for you just to be a part of you is a damn lie. Because once you get in the infantry, everybody want to stay completely away from you because they think you crazy and you don't know what you're going to do. And you want to stay completely <laughs> away from their ass. That is true, too. Yeah. Because you think they crazy too. Not really that. I just don't fuck with them. No, I think they're a little bit crazy because they operate different than I do. It goes back to what we kind of were saying earlier about, I think your homeboy, uh, Miles Miles, might have posted it about, you know, having that understanding of knowing that you can do whatever you go through or whatever right. you encounter or whatever you come to. And a lot of times what happens is um, you encounter people who don't be willing to go through what you go through or do what you do. And you looking at it like, bro, this is easy. What you talking about? Yes. I don't know, bro. I think it's I think the minds are built different. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers never really been put up under that type of stress luck. Well, yeah, I mean, you have to think about that, bro. You know the saying? average person is not going to do what you've been through. It's only what is it is. Is I want to say two percent or less of the United States population join the armed services. It's less than one percent of us crazy fucks that join the infantry. Yeah, if you black, it's less than one point one percent. Hey, look, hey, look, hey, big star. Hey, look. I, I just winded up with the infantry. Only the only reason why I winded up the infantry is because when I when I did my ASVAB. They said, with your score, you can be infantry, infantry, or infantry. Which one you want? I said, I'll take the second one. Right. <laughs> Let me tell you what my daddy said. Y'all ready? I think I am. I don't know. Bro, my daddy said he went to the Marine, uh, what to call him. Uh, Amazing train boot camp. Recruiting uh, office when he was young. He said, man, you know, I'm, I'm a wrestling shit. He was a badass wrestler, big boat dude. Ooh, him wrestling. So, so he, he went he went to that shit bro. because my grandpa went to that shit. His daddy went, you know, he, he boosting them up to go. And then he got to looking around. He went to the recruiting station. He looked at the little slogan. Only, you know, we only need, what, a few good men? Mm -hmm. And my daddy said he counted. One, two, three, four. Oh, that's a few. You got a few good bids. So he walked <laughs> back out there, bitch. He like, son, I salute you, man. You know what I'm saying? You been through some shit, but I, I told him that you got your daddy was like Muhammad Ali, huh? You got I ain't your got few, no problem no being called. He said you got your few good men, he out. But man. my dad, my dad was bad motherfucker. Though. Still bad motherfucker. But you know, he it just it wasn't for him. It's it not for everyone. We lost them. He'd be back. It's not for everybody, though. Mm. You know what I'm saying? The, the military, right. one, for not, is not for everybody. And for two, the infantry is definitely not for everybody. Hell no. Let's see if I need to send them a new invite. I mean, bro. Shit down, straight for everybody, man. Mm. Shit. But, yeah, I'm going to Atlanta, man. Atlanta, I'm ready. They still hear you. Harold, I'm ready on... Um, I call you book bad, nigga. You know who you is. I'm, I'm ready, man. Is that one of your boy right? I'm coming to Atlanta. Do you Chris. some of your problems that you serve with, or yeah. just some of your other problems from bad rules? Really? Yeah. And nah, they all, bro. To tell you the truth, I don't really fuck with my brother in Baton Rouge. You know what I'm saying? My mm -hmm. brothers. That's it. There you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I just sent you a new link, so don't worry about it. Disregarded, you are already here. I don't know. Yeah. About, I don't know about y'all. I don't know what we talked about, and I really hope we blessed y'all. <laughs> we helped y'all with something, but this hour flew by so fast, like a firefight. Like this bitch over. Like this hour went so hey, fast. Good thing you pissed myself, huh? You shouldn't piss yourself. Probably yep. Hey, in a firefight, first firefight, you either shit or piss yourself. I didn't do either one. Yeah, me either. I didn't either. <laughs> I didn't my, get, got to shoot. My first firefight taught me 
that this ain't Kansas no more, Dorothy. This ain't Detroit, and people don't shoot sideways. So you better react on your trade. My first five <laughs> fight taught me I was the fucking boss. Bro, you was in a Bradley. 25 coming at you. H -E I don't think that's fair, bro. I don't, I don't fair, know. Ain't fair about it. I don't know, bro. You was in the Bradley. Hey, you you good? I'd have killed What's on gonna the, stop you? I'd have killed on the ground for losing. I'm not. Team. I'm not saying that you ain't never killed on the ground, but I'm saying for my my first firefight. I, my first firefight. I was in my ASV. I was a TC. I was in my ASV, and they did not want me to get out because I had the Mark 19 and the 50 cal. Right. Before I could blink, my second. My driver, who was on his second tour, right before I could blink, bro. You have to understand when you're on the ASV, it's like a little SWAT vehicle. It's tight. You don't have a lot of room. I don't know if it's as tight as a Bradley. It's tight in the turd. Yeah, tight he was turd. in a driver's seat though, and he's not down there like by himself. It's like we sitting just as close as you and me almost. Right. But in order for him to get out, he has to lay his seat all the way down slide out and crawl out the side door or you got to pop open turn sideways we'll come out the hatch the hell hole. Come right on. come out the hatch bruh my first firefight before i could get on the radio and blink twice and give out some commands to my guys my driver was out the truck he heard the rounds going off be like sarge i gotta go I, I he just freaked out what i consider freaking out he jumped out the truck left the door wide open and ran right into the fire <laughs> <laughs> My first five fight. <laughs> I my saw gunner. Ran right into the fight. Five fight. No. Was it? Najaf, man. We came Jesse in that bitch. For me. Soon we came in that bitch. Motherfucker was shooting at us. And we, you have to learn to get to shoot back at the motherfucker. That was it. Jezza Diala for me, man. My first firefight. I even me. shot over my dismounts. Um, Jose Salazar shot right over watching. his head. Shot over his head. He's like, "Damn, nigga, you hit that motherfucker!" No. <laughs> shot over his head. Wow, 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 wow. I had that twenty-five pop. Say, I seen what I was shooting at. It was real shit. It taught you dude. to trust yourself, though, because being in the military and definitely being in the infantry. I can remember back in two thousand and four when I was in Egypt, peacekeeping mission. My buddy Cameron, shout out to Cameron. Nah. Okay. I remember being in Egypt on a peacekeeping mission, and we had, you know how the army do. Every day is a training day. Hold Every on, day. Hold on, hold on. Go ahead. Let me correct it. I'm sorry. For, no, you're good. I'm sorry for no, you're good. Disrupting. Let me correct that. My homie Salazar mm -hmm. shot over the dismount's head. That's okay. why he was my wing man. My bad. Hey, my hey. bad, Sal. I, did I it, did we put you, you? You accomplished the mission, though, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, my bad. I just had to clear that up. You know, go. But, there you go. There you go. My homeboy Cameron, we is in Egypt. Damn, I don't know what we talking about. Ah, <clears throat> training. My bad. My bad. Every day was like a training day to prepare. You're good. To prepare. And I remember one day we went out on a mission, training mission, and he had to do a live stick, like a live IV stick, like during training in the dark under flashlights. <laughs> He was able to pull it off, and that right there showed me, like, if you are able to calm your mind down, grunts, if you are able to just take that tactical pause, take a deep breath, as Whiskey Charlie and, and Killer Wolf been saying, there is nothing, I mean, absolutely nothing that you cannot get through and that you cannot accomplish because you've tested yourself in some of the hardest things that you could go through when you go through the military and be an infantry basic training soldier. That might be, it may not be the hardest thing you'll ever go through in life, but if you hit that at 18, 19, 21, 22, 23, and that ain't never been a part of you, that's going to be the hardest thing you go through in your life. It's only it's only hard to you depending on how you were raised and what you've been through your life. You know, hey, mm -hmm. to some of us that's you know had the uh, less than fortunate uh, type things. It may be those type of struggles we're used to, or type of things scenarios that we're used to. Maybe we're raised like myself. I was raised with a military dad, military family. You know, I was used to the, that type of structure type things. But people that are not used to that structure thing, maybe the people that are struggling in that basic training scenario. You know what? <laughs> my my school boot camp fucking um got me for that because I was raised around nothing but women. 
I was raised around number women turned out to be most alphas motherfucker ever. The most hey. Alpha is and you know alpha is motherfucker. You know what I'm yeah. talking about. But yeah, hey. Did you say Apple? <laughs> hey, I got a little slur in my tongue right now. I got got this I got, apple. got this bitch right. Hey, you ain't even busting open yet. What's, what's good? I know it is. It is. That's right. You've been mixing that motherfucker. Yeah, hey, hey, I've been doing one and one. I've already on my third one, so I'm about, I'm about six shots in. Bro, try the motherfucking, um, what is it, Coca-Cola lime? You know they got a Coca-Cola lime right now. Yeah. Mix it with that apple. Really? The best, the best thing you ever taste. Put two ice cubes in. That's all you need. Damn. Make, make sure you got a little short glass cup. That's all you need, man. Take your little small spin around. Take it out. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Well, you already on board. Yeah. And you know me. Now I think that Jack Daniel on fire tastes like the fireball. What's that? What's that looking called? Yeah. Fireball. It's fireball. It's called so fireball. It tastes the same, right? Because oh, I yeah. think that one a whiskey too, right? The other one. Oh yeah. 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 I'm, I'm gonna let you know this much that uh, Jack Daniel's Tennessee Fire, man, it's uh to me it's a lot smoother. The Jack Daniels. A lot smoother. I think so too because I think that that fireball probably some old cheap ass shit, right? Not that one, but you know the other. You know that I think some shit called fireball, but yeah, it is called fireball. It's whiskey. Yeah, that it's bitch cheap. Dragon on it. It's like the little red label. Matter of fact, my girl got a little thing of a downstairs. Yeah, they sell them in shops. Little airplane thing. Yeah, I don't even drink like that. I know fireball though. What that is? Tennessee? Oh, Tennessee fire, Jack. Ooh, we ain't going to talk ooh. about my airplane spirit. That might be another one. You remember from the D when you brought Hey, no, nah, that's so, a, Hey, man, we're going to talk about that probably next week. Let's talk that's, that's about one, Let's talk about edibles, marijuana, and alcohol. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now we're going to get some. Now, now we're talking. Now we're going to get the real grunts out. Because if you ain't on air, if you ain't on uh marijuana edibles and alcohol one of the three especially if, now if you in the infantry or you've been in any part of the infantry if you not on marijuana edibles which is a part of marijuana or alcohol or i'm gonna throw this one in there some vicodin oxycontin whatever yeah. prescription drug you want we're gonna welcome all y'all in we're gonna welcome all y'all in i want you to tell me how you getting through and what helped you turn that into being a part of you? Because oh. I had some buddies that was making cocktails when I was in Iraq. And when I mean by cocktails, they was getting like ambience and monster and, and figuring out a way to stay up. Uh -oh. Wait, I got to go. Shit. Oh, my God. That'd be yeah. God. Ambience Damn. and monster. One yeah. put you to sleep. Mm. <laughs> what a shit. I, I, I do monster and Viagra. Monster. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, but yeah. Monster and Viagra. That's what I do. Oh, I don't know what I'd be doing. Okay. Monster and Viagra? What you what, what? What? What you what you what doing? You, what you fucking doing? <laughs> I'm screwing holes in the wall, bro. I'm screwing holes in the wall. What you doing? What the monster in the Viagra? Man, that poor John hold up, boy. <laughs> I know that poor John look like uh Jack Mountain, two thousand. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Hey, like, like Porter Johns, man, you, you get to, uh, some great stories from those Porter Johns, you know. He's Porter Johns, you always you always see some shit written on those walls, man. Listen to me, bro. On some real infantry talk, I probably got about anywhere from fifty. All right, I'm gonna drop the number down. Let's just say twenty to fifty, and it's probably higher than that. I probably got anywhere from twenty to 50 Viagras, and then I probably got anywhere from 20 Man. to 75 Cialis 
For what? what you at doing? a location right now that I can easily access in less than drive time, 12 minutes. I never needed it. Here's the thing. Not right now. I'm morning all the fucking time. I don't know about anything else. I, I, didn't say I, I didn't say I needed it. I just nah, said I, I had it. I ain't really, I I be like that, that bro. I'll be like So that. in 04, when I was infantry, this is what infantry taught me. Infantry taught me, hey, although I'm not in the Navy, I get out the country too. And when you get out the country, it's some things that you got access to that you don't <laughs> have to bring uh. And so in 04, I learned real fast. It's like, if I aggro was getting big, it turned me into a salesman. And I made a lot of money off of them. Oh, right. And so in 2015, I bought some more, but I didn't go back to the same location that I was at before. Right. So now I'm just stuck with them and they've been sitting somewhere. Big Sarge was always standing at attention, huh? They no. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Big, you know, Big Sarge is transparent. Big Sarge is transparent. I ain't gonna lie to you. I didn't. I didn't use them both before. It go with the boat, man. I didn't use them both before. It go with the boat. And the here's float. the thing. Here's the thing. Why I use them both. Here's the thing. Why I use them both before. And I use them. I'm 43. I don't need them now. I didn't need them at 33. But that's about the time that I used them when I was about 30, G, because I was real with myself being in the infantry. You can say what you want to say and talk all that shit on the camera that you want to, but ain't no man on this camera pretty much going to last most of the women that you run into. You know why? Because they got a hole that don't get soft on you. That bitch still available too. All you got to do is wet. <laughs> man is grumpy. My grumpy, grumpy. Kids, PSA. Any hey. man don't want to lie to himself and say he could just stand and testify and go as long as a woman can, you probably lying. You just ain't running to the right woman, man. Hey. Because once he take a nap, nap, you might be tap tap. So for me, <laughs> for me, <laughs> being, a wild, being a wild and crazy guy that I am, and this has probably been what is this twenty. This has probably been easily over seven years ago since the last time I even, even took one. Just me being a wild and crazy guy that I am, I just took one to see if these things actually do what they say they're supposed to do. But I'm going to be true. Our <laughs> erection. So I was disappointed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's why they still sit. That's now, still sitting somewhere. That's probably what it is. Packed up. That's that what shit. it is. Hopefully they ain't grew cobwebs on them. I don't know. I ain't even looked at them in two years. They still I ain't even looked at them in two years. <laughs> no, I take that back. I looked at them a year ago because I had somebody reach out to me and ask for some, and I gave them to them. Hmm. But anyhow, man. No balls reached out to you? Nah, I ain't going to say his name on camera because. You don't want to put him on camera. Nah, I don't want to put him on black. Nah, I wouldn't expect I you for the people don't know who exactly who that is. I know you ain't dead, is it? Who I think it is? Probably. You only know. I only know. Ah, uh, yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. I understand why, too, though. I understand, baby. Why? I don't, I don't know why, but okay. But I'm yeah. saying, like, you know, I, if it's the person I think that I know. Yeah, I, you only know one person that I know, Whiskey Charlie. No, I'm just messing no, with you, man. Like, oh, Whiskey crazy. Charlie, what did you read? I know you don't read. He reading them comments. <laughs> hey, I'm not reading nothing. I'm uh, actually uh, <laughs> making sure I'm uh, sharing our video as much as oh, I can. They yeah, probably, they didn't probably lost left us. They're like y'all crazy, but it was still wrong. They they don't want to leave us. They need us. They gotta follow us. Hey man, this has been a wonderful night. We have done a great thing talking. I don't know what we talked about besides how the infantry helped change our life, how grunts helped change our life. How, actually, you know what? And, uh, and a lot of things, you know, they went like this. Yeah, but here's the thing though: how it really helped change our life. A lot of times, it kept a lot of us, like Shooter here, uh, connected to our wife. It took me back to my wife because it helped me understand who who had my back and who was willing to help me grow in life. Because in order for you to really go through what you go through and do what you do, it's good to have a strong woman or if you, you know, infantry new now, if you got a partner supporting you. I don't want to leave nobody out, but. Yeah, we don't leave them. Yeah, I don't want to leave nobody out. I know we got rainbows in the infantry, too. We ain't got no beef so, with y'all. I ain't got no beef with nobody. Don't take that personal. But I do know this. Being in the infantry, being in the military, period. 
but definitely being in the infantry is good to have somebody to support you and what you're going through because doing that is not an easy job to do like we all talked about getting in firefights a little bit from here and there but that's stuff that you have to take home with you and you have to deal with too yeah. and if you don't have nobody to release that to it can tear you up and we got a lot of brothers out here that's still torn up because they don't know who to release to they don't got no viagra to use on nobody so they just got a lot of problems hey hey, hey big sarge am i am i had to chime in on, on on this uh conversation going into hey look but also want to give out uh give a uh helpful advice to my uh battles out there right now hey you don't have to have somebody though you know you, you got us you got your left and your right to you right you got your left and right to you you don't have to have that someone that and that goes back to uh what we were kind of talking about earlier you know aka jody fuck that bitch and and fuck anybody else that has to deal with that uh but uh look you, you're fine hey pick up and and i have uh lost family members and uh military brothers and all kinds of people from suicide due to uh uh mm -hmm. t women or men or whatever else hey man it is not worth it. there's too many people out there i'm just gonna let you know man it's, it's, it's the woman or man that uh, is out there that's uh, left you. Hey, pick up and move on, you guys. You got to keep your head held high. You, you're an infantryman. You know what? We didn't just stop in the middle of a mission because we because we lost. We keep on moving, right? We got to keep that uh, got to keep that battle stance in. We got to keep going. I don't want any of my battles out there, whether you're with me or not. And I'm out now, but uh, whether you're still in or vice of been out, but do not let uh an individual uh control how, how you feel in your life man hey you're you're the best that you are for because of who you are you don't don't, don't let anybody slow you down look i was from a small town when i before i before i enlisted i thought that the individual that i was with or individuals i was with uh, was the only people i had the opportunity with but you know hey get out there seek out there hey use the online that's what i did i met my wife i've been now with my wife now going on uh, almost a, uh, going on 10 years now, almost 11 years uh, because I met her offline. Hey, th there's plenty of options out there. You guys do not let one person slow you down. I, I, that's really what I got to tell you. Hey, do not, don't, don't let it, don't let it hurt you. Don't let it take your mind to where that's the only person. And that there's, if they leave you, that that's the only thing you have. You've got more. There's, there's more out there. Indeed. Absolutely. But you got to see that for you. And that, again, you we're talking to. about what the infantry <clears throat> helped you get through. Although we worked in battle buddy teams, it was all about making sure you taking care of yourself first so you can help the team. Whiskey Charlie, you got work tomorrow? Seven o'clock. <laughs> Seven o'clock. <laughs> what, what time you done drinking tonight? After you get out this No, uh-uh, no. He'll be doing that. No. no. No, nah, right Whiskey right. Charlie ain't going to bed till like probably like 10. No, it's almost 10, probably 11 or 12. No, it's about one or two, man. I can't sleep anymore. I used to be able to go fall asleep on a dime, but uh, nah, one or two, I'll fall asleep. But uh, I used to sit on my front porch and wait for one of these fucking crackheads around town to come around and try to fuck around. <laughs> They're about to learn today. They're about to learn today. Oh, let me ask you a question. <laughs> He might hold Let me ask a you a question, Whiskey Charlie. So in face, but, Do the crackheads come around often that you sit down and wait for them, or that's just a story you tell yourself to sit out? <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, look, that, that haven't came around my part of the neck of the woods lately, but because my yard is fenced in, right? All my neighbors feel mm -hmm. bad for me because they're not fenced in. They've been broken into two or three times within the last maybe six to six months to a year, right? I've never been broke into once. Mine's fenced in, but I want them to attempt to get in my yard, especially with me knowing. So we we always adapt in the, in the military, right? We always learn adapt to overcome. Adapt and overcome, right? Adapt and overcome. Well, I've also adapted to. I know because I read everything upon the whole entire area, right? Of what time people are getting broke into. So right now, the thieves in and around this area are breaking into people's cars and houses between the time of 1.30 to 3 o'clock. 1.30 to 3 o'clock. Everybody work. So you're going to sit on a porch to 0.3 and then go to oh, sleep nah, to 0.5, 30, oh, yeah. to 0.6 and get to work at 7? That's what I do, baby. 
That's infantry. <laughs> hey, I gotta get my CQ duty on. You know what I'm saying? I gotta roll outside real quick. You gotta get the CQ nah, duty on. Nah, that's it. That's fire goal. Fire watch. Yeah, fire watch. Fire watch. Fire goal. Oh, like this property. I I hear I hear echo I I hear Al and Al and outside of school. Green light. They look green. They look green. Yeah, I, I seen you out there at the range the other day. Hey. Oh, looking, looking all pogue, like all excitable, like you ain't been out there in a while. You see what happens when you take the infantry off the range. Hey, bro, I got, I got hard on it. Like, oh, hey. I'm shooting, bro. Hey, nah, it's like, hey, man, you like smelling the gunpowder. Uh, first, man, uh, first time I remember the range was um in Louisiana in the backyard. That was like that just shooting. you need. Range. Well, I actually been in no range range since military. Really? Oh yeah, I never been in range range, but it, uh, the one I went to was actually uh, one of my uh, dad's best friends, and I consider him my uncle. But uh, he was a uh, he was an army uh, way back, way back, way back. I uh, can't can't remember exactly the dates, but he was a he, he was comms. But uh, I tell you what, he was he was a fucking badass. And uh, I went up to his house. He let me use his. He's got the targets, everything else. Got to go down. He got like seven acres, so I just went down there and lay down some rounds, man. But uh, anytime, hey, whenever y'all cross through, if we're gonna do a, hey, maybe we can do a, uh, a live speed on us shooting some down on the range down over there. Crazy part, bro, motherfuckers don't even know how to adjust their front sight posts. Mm. Ooh, that's so crazy. Just count up and down on a target to the left or right. They don't know to adjust. Turn All it took me is one shot to that little tail, or you shit, take right? a round, shot. A herber, and you smash it, expand it round, down flat, and adjust. then you adjust that little front sight post go to raise down. it up or lower it down yeah, yeah. to go with the sights in the back. Yeah. yeah, you gotta know how to battle zero that thing. You gotta go all the way to the left, Sweet then bring bro. it all the way back to the right in the center, and then you gotta go all the way up. Bring it all the way back down and count back up. Get that thing battlefield zero and then start to sight yourself in. Yeah, that, man. Hey, all man. it took me was one shot to figure out center mass on my last one. First time shooting since I was in the military. One shot and then was able to hit, hit center mass. The thing about when it's you got hard. your own personal weapon too also, when you got your weapon and you taking it home with you and you putting it up and you securing it, you're not worrying about somebody slamming it all around and messing up your sights. I think I can shoot on anybody well. Nice. Right You'll be able to if it's zero. EIB on EIB training, we shot on nice. um, one guy weapon, Sergeant A. Mm -hmm. His shit was zero. We shot on his weapon. Everybody qualified. Everybody qualified. Well, hey, man, check this out, Grunts. We didn't spoke, and I'm done speaking. That's I don't it. know about them, but I hopefully we left you leaking. Leaking with something in your mind to pass your time to see what you didn't been through to help you get through to continue to be the grunt strong man that you supposed to be. And let me throw this out there for the new infantry, just in case you got some women in your unit, the strong women you supposed to be too. That's why I had to get away from the military. So I didn't want to be getting my career ruined for the female type for you. No offense to the females, but I just heard that was something that was getting me to do. But anyhow, I'm going to say bye. We going to say bye to you because I'm about to go home and chill out too. Like Whiskey Charlie and Wolf is sitting here doing, I'm about to go home too. Oh, really? We going to have to say bye to you. You got something to leave with them, Shooter? Man, shit, stay up, man. Take care of yourself. I mean, this hour and 30 minutes went so quick. Yeah, uh, yeah. You got something for Whiskey Charlie? Hey, you guys, hey, just, uh, make make sure at the end of the day, man, be yourself, be who you are. And, uh, hey, remember, you always got us here now. Hey, we're here uh, anytime you need to. I know that any of us will answer to you. If you ever need somebody to talk to, hey, reach out. Don't uh, don't be that don't be that person that doesn't think they have somebody. You still got somebody to your left. You still got somebody to your right. We're all, all three of us here. Anytime you want to reach out, I know uh, myself, hey, I'm willing to do anything I can do to help anybody. It don't matter if you're uh, uh, infantryman or not, uh, if you're a military personnel or a person. Hey, man, don't be afraid to reach out. I mean, I may, I may not have the advice right away, but uh, I can definitely get it for you and get you some help. Uh, one word. Leave me with one word, Whiskey Charlie. What you got? Oh, one shit. Word. That's whiskey. Hey. <laughs> one word. Um... One word. Damn. Yeah. 
I've been thinking on mine because I had the question. <laughs> oh, look. I got, I got he done caught us on the spot, and then he yeah. already had his word. Yeah, yeah. So, he cool. got his so word. So cool. You got, got a, you got about 15 seconds after he gave me his two words to give me your two words. Good. Uh, I'm still sticking with whiskey. There you go. <laughs> Good vibes. Man. Good vibes. Discipline and consistency. Discipline and consistency. I got two, too. I, I used two vibes. words because he said good vibes. So now I'm using two. Whiskey Charlie. Whiskey Charlie. He said whiskey. Charlie, continue yeah. the mission. Keep drinking whiskey. <laughs> hey, discipline and consistency. As long as you discipline yourself to be consistent on doing what you say you want to do and becoming a better version of you, you might not be infantry, but you might be army strong too. I hope this motivation and inspiration, this little bit of conversation from Grunt Speak blessed you. Well, this is not for kids, but it'll bless your kids too. And it'll help you see your way through. By Grunts, for Grunts. Send this to the Grunts in your life. We out. We gonna see y'all next time on time. At the right time is the time that we get on. We Peace. gave him extra 30 minutes. Man, we gave him a whole extra 30 minutes. Peace. Peace. And, okay, have a great night. Okay, cool. Yep. Yeah. Yeah.